Well, thank you for attending our webinar about topology optimization and additive manufacturing. Uh, we'll be talking about a certain number of things, and here's what we're going to talk about, or what I want to talk about, and then you guys feel free to ask questions uh, at any point in time or, or make uh, comments. If uh, you guys could please uh, put yourself on mute for the, the most part of this uh, presentation, so that way we can hear your, your side conversation and, and so on and so forth. I'm um, going to start by doing some introductions. Uh, so first of all, who are we are and, and who we represent and, and the context we're going to talk about today. Um, secondly, we're going to introduce topology optimization. Then we'll talk about the simulation for the additive manufacturing process. And then we're going to discuss uh, a, a recap of, of what we discussed. So first of all, introductions. Uh, so on the top you have Tentec LLC, this is us, and our mission is to assist manufacturing companies in finding better, safer products in a faster way and at a reduced cost. And and we are partnering with the SO systems. The SO systems provide business and people with 3D experience universes to imagine sustainable innovations capable of harmonizing product, nature, and life. So that's all of us want. Uh, this is going to come uh, to light in the, the product presentation a little more, and you'll see how you, you can associate all those those marketing terms to, to actual real-life products. So who are we? Uh, we are an aerospace and defense in high-tech consultants. Uh, we started as an engineering services company. And this is what sets us apart from a lot of the software resellers uh, out there is that we did not start by selling software and then eventually turned into a services organization. We started as a services organization, then later on uh, found out that, that you know we're, we're at that distributing uh, software as well. Uh, so we primarily work in in the government, in defense electronics, and space in general. Uh, by the nature of where we are, we are we're based in Los Angeles and uh, have a, a side office, a partner office in uh, Berwick, Massachusetts. So it's about 30 minutes outside of Boston. Um, we also, as I said, we started as consultants. Uh, we also provide software and education services. So all uh, revolving around a particular tool set uh, provided by Desil Systems. Uh, um, we have if you wish, three divisions, engineering services, software solution, education services. Software solutions and education services are very close to each other in the sense that we teach most of the products that we sell, but not just that. The one who's speaking right now is me. So I founded the company about six years ago. Um, I try to manage technical aspects of the company and try to do a little bit of project management. Of course, I still enjoy doing project work, so I, I really do uh, dig into the product and into the uh, projects. In the aerospace industry, I uh, come from Europe, working at no what's called Airbus, working helicopters, uh, ballistic missiles, launchers, and then I spent a certain number of years in the uh, in, in US uh, doing engineering services, engineering management, as well as uh, consultants for EAE software companies. And some examples of, of what we have done in the past, and again, we do design test and analysis services, um, we are using a certain number of, of products to do all this and we try to invest in the top of the line of all the products to give us the best flexibility. Uh, some of the, the examples again that, that we walked on on the bottom left uh, we got something called Link NYC which is a kiosk uh, being deployed in New York City. This is a, a 10 feet tall uh, big this aid that also provides a Wi-Fi bridge to the entire city of New York. It is about 
thousand or three thousand deployed, and this it's going to replace all the um, all the public booth in New York City. So we did a certain number of things in that uh, thermal analysis and and a lot of uh, PE civil engineering type of work to size the uh, the link or what's called a bridge, so the structure itself, and work with the uh, the city of New York to to do a certain number of things. Uh, to, to make sure that this, this product was qualified. Um, on the defense side, we worked uh, on a lot of products, and we're still working on a lot of products, and this particular example in the middle is, is a defense electronic system. It's a data recorder that's uh, for the U.S. Navy, and this particular project was, was very nice to us because we started early on the design process, designing and then at the same time so we could use the simulation tools to, to really affect the design in a positive manner. Both shop, uh, thermal analysis, and a little bit of EMI, and, and you know, a lot of different things, fatigue, uh, a lot of different requirements. On the, the right-hand side, this is a telescope that we walked on last year. Uh, this is a, actually an array of telescopes that that is uh, being deployed in Chile, and a lot of requirements for vibration, shock, again, uh, the electronics, and the uh, uh, the needs to be perfectly aligned and cannot, you know, they from a certain uh, certain uh, of, of alignment. Uh, we have a certain number of requirements as far as it's in the desert, so we have thermal expansion to look at. We have, you know, high winds, so we did a lot of things in dynamics in fluids, uh, CFD, and coupled fluid uh, and, and structure. Um, as far as our software solutions, so we are the sole systems that what the sole system called value solution partner. Uh, value solution sells uh, the high-end products from, from the, the sole systems uh, line of products. So particularly for us, we are selling and supporting Katia, Enovia, and Simulia. Katia is the, the, the top uh, CAD, if you wish, brand, and so number one uh, CAD system in the world. Enovia is number one PLM system in the world, and Simulia just happens to be the number one uh, CAE system in, uh, in the world. So those three combined, this is very close to being number one across the board. Um, we are supporting and selling both on the East Coast and West Coast by the fact that we have two, uh, two businesses, one in Los Angeles, one in, in Boston. And we also an education partner. Again, I mentioned that uh, the education services both right at all facility or online um, WebEx type of uh, of training. A little bit on the on the right, you see your, uh, an example of a training class that, that we teach. And uh, this was was uh, um, key analysis. Now moving on to the social systems. The social systems is. A scientific company is a very large company that, that provides a certain number of, of tools. Uh, again, I mentioned CATIA. CATIA, for instance, is the CAT system used to design the Airbus line or used to design the Boeing line, used to design a certain number of uh, uh, the, the big four uh, automotive. And, and you see it across the board everywhere in the aerospace industry and the automotive industry. Um, this is one of the brands. Simulia is another brand. Simulia is a brand. Uh, the, the flagship of Simulia would be Abacus FEA Solver. Um, pretty much everybody has heard about the FEA Solver Abacus. Okay. Uh, as far as the number of customers that, that the Soul System has, you see this is a very large company. You look at 200,000 enterprise customers plus smaller companies. Uh, you look at the revenue, which is which is enormous. So we're very happy to be representing the Soul Systems. Um, products and solutions. As far as how the system organizes their products, I'm sure you've heard of something called the 3D Experience Platform. Actually, this is a business platform that allows for the entire enterprise to take advantage of the data being created and the data being used. Uh, and it is distributed and in the center there we have what we call the quadrant and the, uh, the compass, sorry. And the compass has four different quadrants. Each of those quadrants uh, unleashes options 
and unleash its functionality. At the bottom, for instance, south, we have simulation applications. So we have Simulia, which, which I mentioned before. On the left hand side, you have the 3D modeling applications. Katia is one of them. You know, and so on and so forth. Uh, collaboration app applications in Novia. Um, so one of the uh, the beauty of uh, of this application is it starts off from a, a web browser, and people are allowed to to access whatever application relates to their function in the company. And so it's it's a very simple, very slick user interface. It's uh, it's even uh, offered on cloud, so zero implementation, zero. Um, Everything is done on the cloud, including the licensing. So it's it's a very very. Uh, so they will talk about a certain number of applications, mostly Simulia and the Simulia brand. So let's actually look at Simulia. Simulia itself, so it's a subset, it's a brand within the Soul Systems, about a thousand employees, um, of users, a lot of partners, and and this is a very very high end technology driven. Brian. Now the other ones are, but but the, the Simulia brand is is extremely technical. And uh, the mission statement of Simulia is realistic simulation. And and we'll see that in in this presentation we'll we'll see the realism in the simulation and the effort being put into re really simulating what happens in real life. Portfolio within uh, Simulia, a certain number of, of products that are offered. So Abacus is the flagship. Uh, so high-end, linear, non-linear, explicit CFD, you name it, uh, electromagnetics, uh, fluid structure interaction, lots of functionality to represent a lot of physics. We have a certain number of other products that, that are part of this portfolio. iSight is a, a way of, or it's a gateway to, to connect multiple applications together and take advantage of um, co-simulation within uh, completely different products, including products not from the Simulia portfolio brand. Tusca, both structure, structure and fluid, are applications for structural optimization or fluid flow both the topology optimization, or in the case of structure, there's even you know, and, and shape optimization. And lastly, if you save, which allows us to do fatigue analysis and durability prediction, um, being generation, being thermal, being rotating machinery. Um, so naturally, all those applications talk to each other, walk with each other, and within the 3D experience platform are completely seamlessly working together. So, now we're going to switch to actually looking at what we were supposed to talk about today, uh, the topology optimization. So, and within the topology optimization, we'll have some, some definitions and we'll also look at a particular product, uh, the task optimization. Topology optimization. Well, in, in short, it's a way of distributing a given mass to satisfy a, a certain number of uh, conditions. Um, we have a design domain that's given to us, and we have a number of structural loads and boundary conditions that are given to us. So if you look on the, at the bottom, uh, in way you have your design volume, and we're pouring material to satisfy the conditions from that gray block, which satisfies the conditions, and we're looking at it and say, well, maybe we don't need that much material. And it turns out, by topology optimization, actually um, use only 70% of the material. So we say 30% of our material by, by looking at the, uh, the design slightly differently. So topology optimization is very different from a standard Shape optimization, for instance, or parametric optimization. This one, you don't really um, have to say, okay, look at this dimension between three inches and 3.5 inches, for instance. You're just looking at it and say, make it lighter, and 
keep it smooth. So this is how we end up with with a much more flexible design. In, in, this is a principle of of totally optimization. If you look at the right, um, started that this uh, this uh, wheel on top. Say you know the light blue might be extra, so the topology optimization looks at this and say, well, you know, for your loads, given what you're looking for, you really need to have a full solid, and you can actually hold it. And this is this is what. So uh, if we relate to the aerospace industry, for instance, this is very often done manually. You often have pockets to to light products. Well, topology optimization will help you do that. Well, and we'll look at that later. So how do we do that? The typical faster, cheaper, better. Um, well, it's, it's easier to, again, if we look at right, it's easier to catch and optimize your product early in the design cycle. So the quote unquote, no good uh, approach is to design, build, and then test. Uh, and we see that a lot is still being practiced in you know, you usually it's it's fine if you design well. Every now and then something happens, and then you have to retool, you have to redesign, and it's it's a huge cost. And as you see, the development cost is much higher when you catch mistakes. Yeah. So over the years, one of the things that's been happening is well, let's insert some analysis before building and testing. This good. This is you know one of the things we do for customers and I was to catch potential mistakes earlier so this already reduced uh, development cost and time now this this is good but you know the analysis in the classic design sense we, we are you know in a kind of a rigid environment which say we designed this way let's look at it oh we need to modify this make it thicker make it bigger with the design uh, now, if you introduce optimization and particularly topology optimization, and all of a sudden we can look at something we we actually look at how it's going to function and how it's going how we make it reactive to what this product is supposed to work with, and who cares if it doesn't look symmetrical if the loads are not symmetrical? Who cares if it, it looks it thin out some beams, thin out, or some 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 parts of the uh, the, the the assembly thin out, or, or have a strange shape. If all it does is work better, much lighter, and react to the loads that we we are uh, we want to, uh, to use. So the animation is really going inside the design cycle right early on, and you end up with products that are typically and better. You do it in a much, much faster way because you started like this. The prime from Simulia that we're using uh, for for realizing this this optimization is is called Tosca. So it's an optimization suite. There's actually two products, or two product lines. One for structures and one for fluids. Those are completely different equations. Completely different. Uh, types of physics, so there, there's a separation between the products. Uh, so the structural optimization from from Tusk. One of the nice things is it's a package agnostic. So you can use it with Abacus, you can use it with Ansys, you can use it with Astran. As a matter of fact, Tusk is OEM by the majority of the um, and LCA companies. So um, you know, products, for instance, is using Tusk as its optimization suite. Um, and, and on top of that, you have um, Tosca run, running inside Abacus, which adds you know, a certain number of, uh, of functionality. Now, in uh, Tosca structures, it's not only topology optimization, you also have shape optimization, so classic um, you know, modifying a dimension, so th those kind of things, so those kind of parametric Okay, and you also have a, a very, very neat tool called bead optimization to optimize sheet metal parts uh, to, to actually add beads to increase stiffness where it needs to be. Um, 
right, we're looking at animation, and we will see this animation more and more as we do. Uh, topology optimization of a part. So we started with the yellow or, or round part, and as the topology optimization is is working, it's chewing away pieces of the solid that are not necessary for for application. Now, uh, the second product on the Tosca optimization suite is Tosca fluids, and, and this one is looking strictly at fluid flow. So it works with within the major CFD solvers. Once again, it's, it, it works in conjunction. It plugs in to, to the, uh, the, the solvers. So no wonder we find star CCM and ANSYS Fluent, for instance, as, as the uh, compatible uh, applications. And one of the nice things about this, and if you see at the right, right side, uh, an optimization of a, a cavity. So it starts as a block, and you say, OK, make it make it so that my volume is going to be optimal for distributing the in those, those three uh, pipes. One of the big about this is it's a single run. So you add your topology, your topology optimization inside your CFD run, it, and actually would all those results within one cell. Um, and structures is the same way. Structures is you give your design goals and your constraints, and you let it go, and it's going to give you uh, solutions, solutions as it's it's going through and different options based on how much material you want to look So a typical process and in, in you know topology optimization is not just a click of a button and all of a sudden magic uh, optimal designs appear in the CAD system. Okay, there's a little bit of work to do. Uh, so the uh, the classic process is okay. Let's let's take a look at this design. And we try to optimize it. So the topology optimization is an FE based uh, process. So the first step is we design, uh, we, we create a design space and say this is by final element modeling. And if this is the space I want to use and I want to make my part lighter and as strong in, and to be able to design it. Okay. So we start by, by uh, making a final element model of all design space would actually be bigger than the actual uh, design because we want to be able to look at you know what we could add or remove from this, not just remove. Some cases where you add, you, you raise a, a rib or two, remove everything else, and you are better off. So the point optimization ends up with here the um, best solution. Okay, the solution is uh, it is what it is. So it, it looks um, a little funky. It's it's based on the fact that you know looking at the loads that we have um, and the stiffness we want to to achieve, um, moving the, the center part is is, is adequate. And you know, of course, we need to have cushions and all this. But you know, given that there's no load that goes through certain pieces, we don't necessarily have to have a lot of. Uh, uh, one of the things in the in the topology optimization settings is you actually tell the software don't remove the bolt holes, for instance. I want to keep this interface, so we see the three bolt holes um, state because we want them there. We want to be able to attach this one. So from this and this topology optimization results is a finite element model. So you end up with nodes and elements. So from we still need to make a CAD model. So the thing that we can do is actually start cutting splines, make cross sections. And we're going to get that to the CAD system. And eventually, not eventually because it's not just a two minutes process, we're going to end up with a new design. Okay, this design again is taken into account manufacturability as well. So in this particular case, this is a standard manufacturing process. It wouldn't be a not necessarily could be, but it doesn't need to be uh, a additive manufacturing. This one is classic um, classic manufacturing. So, what things can we do with that? Um, well, we we are looking quite often at maximizing stiffness. Um, 
within volume. And sometimes we, and quite often, we say, well, you know, this product is, needs to work in a certain environment, especially for a one application, for instance, we have more space. We have a frequency uh, constraint. So we don't want the thing to start shaking and, and vibrating all and start, you know, getting problems around or even creating problems for itself. So we, we, we quite often have a, a frequency constraint, meaning I don't want the first natural frequency to be below 200 hertz, for instance. We also often have a displacement constraint. Like, you know, we can make it very light, but it can also become very flexible. Uh, we don't don't really want to do that. Um, other other things so we can we can look at minimize stress, minimize reaction on all forces, internal forces, and once again the dynamic response, which is a very important part of uh, of, of other things we do, is not only maximize the first natural frequency to so make it as stiff as possible, but also make sure that those six frequencies that are so close to each other that if any chance we hit this this center frequency, our, our dynamic response we're going to create a, a ripple effect across in the box. Um, so the next step, and we saw that the next step of uh, of the, the optimization is ending up with a design. And so here we see the three D experience. Uh, so Katia within the three D experience platform. Uh, working on a design. So the end result of our topology optimization is a finite element model or an STL file. It's it's very similar. And from this STL file, we need to reconstruct surfaces. We need to transfer that to CAD. We need to go to a tooling, CNC, or additive manufacturing. So we're using all the tools in Katia to do this. So recognizing what's a flat face, what's a cylindrical face, and let's let ha let's have the actually put everything together. So we're looking at um, automated surface creation based on some of the uh, the features that we recognized, and now we're looking at where were we and where we are. Okay, so it's looking that we uh, we have removed. Certain things. Now uh, we're trimming down a little bit more. So we end up with surfaces. So now those surfaces are perfectly usable. We can fill it. Okay, so we can continue adding adding features to this uh, this product. Okay, so very important to to be able to quickly create. Uh, usable CAD models within an STL file. Now, let's get one of our examples. Um, so, as I mentioned before, we worked a lot in aerospace and defense electronics. Uh, we do have that. We work a lot with AVX systems. Um, and you see that at the top right, this is an example of, uh, in black right here, an example of. One of the chassis. So those chassis are standard sizes uh, to occupy a certain volume. This is in a particular location of within an ionic space in the elections that have to happen to the ionic space, and this is a certain number of uh, of things to respect. Inside this this chassis, there's a lot of electronics, lot, lots of heavy things. Um, one of the things that, that we, the company, look at for, for our, our customers or for our designs ourselves, we're looking at all the vibration, shock, and heat. This is the majority of the airborne um, applications have a lot of vibration fatigue uh, happening. So there's a lot of things that we need to, we need to, to look at. So I think is quote and that's say 99% of the time, this is traditional manufacturing process. So we got spinning, we got braiding, and, and we need to respect that. So the crazy looking topology optimization and results with the uh, optimized pieces might not necessarily work for this application. 
Yeah, you need to respect to be able to to actually put things together. Not only do we have to respect a certain volume, but we also have constraints on how we manufacture it. What that for this particular project, and an old customer came came uh, to us and say, uh, we'd like to reduce the mass by 40% across the board without making any design change. <laughs> so uh, this is not necessarily realistic, but we looked at okay. The first thing that 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 we we're looking at is what's the heaviest part of this chassis, and the heaviest part of this chassis, about 20% of the mass, is the base plate. So this is where uh, the chassis sits, and this is this is where the connections are made to the assembly. So this is not necessarily something extremely structural. It doesn't necessarily have to be that heavy, uh, but in some constructions, this is the only piece that really has a, a structural aspect. So we just simply decide to remove the majority. There's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of constraints to this point. It's this point was not a block. The starting point was something that was already highly engineered. So the the designers had already made an effort to lighten the product. A lot of pockets, a lot of you know holes, a lot of, of things like this. We have stiffness requirements and we have frequency requirements. Uh, on the spec, based on the uh, on the uh, the airplane that we have to 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 fly into. We can't be at 200 responses or 300 hertz. You have to be higher than that. Otherwise, you're going to have a, a coupling of the vibration of the, from the structure of the airplane to the AC, which is going to be destructive. So we want to avoid this. And on top of it, as I mentioned before, we have to maintain traditional manufacturing. This particular customer was not too good to try um, to printing and additive manufacturing. They wanted to remain in their their domain of traditional manufacturing. So, what happened to it? Well, we we started off with uh, Tosca, so we looked at you know let's take the base plate. So if you see the base plate is on the left at 3.93 pounds. Uh, this is aluminum 6061, and we started off with okay at least we want 30 percent. Let's make it 40 percent uh, mass. There's a lot of mounting holes, and those mounting holes cannot go away. Some that mounts to it, that's movable. We respect all those interfaces. Some are mounting points to the side wall, to the airplane shelf, and some are inside the the chassis itself. Electronics, single bolt computers, and, and so on and so forth. Things that cannot move. They are there, and they are going to stay. Um, so, the holes, all the majority of the interfaces that were there needs to stay. And on top of it, we need to be to a certain extent. We don't want to go on at a super flexible part because all of a sudden we're going to have resonance with the airplane structure. So we want to maximize the first frequency. So after a number of, of uh, topology optimization runs, we up with a part that was 36% lighter, but once and 36% lighter in topology optimization, it looked like uh, it didn't look like what's what's on the right. It looked a little bit chewed. It looked you know a result of the topology optimization. What it gave us though is it showed us and highlighted places in the design where you could get away with having no material or very little material. Uh, look, for instance, in the back, this this um, cross member there, which was there to add stiffness, um, and really not so much. It was more there to to be a, a support for a plenum that goes above it for uh, for, for and gravity. So, all the optimization says there's no load there. You can check it out. So, it won't or it looked more hollow that it is there, but you know, that gave us a hint. Uh, like, oh. So well, you know, maybe we can just get away with removing all this material. Uh, similarly the inside and the part left uh it's under it's hollow 
we looked at it and said, oh, you know, we can we can hollow it even more. And we had some little support structures left and right. And again, uh, with a, a brazing process, you know, we can have those our inserts, not a problem. Uh, so we ended up with a machine part with certain number of inserts being brazed. The end result was well, we about a pound, uh, actually 1.2. And at the cost um, of a, a kilogram on, on an aircraft or a, a wash on a rocket, it's about $10,000 a kilogram, so $5,000 a pound, we, we were able to save, let's say, five to $10,000 on, on this particular product. And this is one example. Uh, you know the the the, com the design optimization continued to a certain number of other plates to to shave off another two three pounds. I thought, um, you know, say it's it's about twenty percent of the mass there, so the, the chassis combined is about twenty pounds. So they four five pounds on twenty pounds, that's pretty darn good. Uh, so this is one of the applications, and again, this one is pure strict topology optimization that gives us the the guidance to up with um, design intent with the the traditional manufacturing in mind. Uh, so now we're going to look at more, I guess, interesting or, or, or more uh, more open designs, and this is additive manufacturing. So we're going to look at additive manufacturing in the sense of simulation. Again, if you remember, Simulia's uh, motto is realistic simulation. Uh, manufacturing is great, but there's things that we don't necessarily know right off hand, such as a CNC machining process, for instance. So there's different different aspects of uh, additive manufacturing that, that that make it a little more difficult or a little different than, than standard CNC machining. Uh, so we're going to look at Tosca in the uh, context of additive manufacturing, and we're going to look at Abacus and its toolkit for additive manufacturing, which is really, really cool. So first, everybody agrees uh, additive manufacturing is there, it's there to stay, and more and more people and companies are uh, making actual usable parts. That even go on airplanes, on that flies, they get qualified, and out of metal. It used to be that, oh, let's make just a little plastic part just to look at it in a design review. This is not the case anymore. You can still do that, but nowadays, there's parts being made of aluminum, titanium, you name it. Uh, you're ready for, for use on the field. Um, we have in, in LA, we have a chance to, to be about five minutes from a company called more free, and that's exactly what they're doing. They have, they are, they are open a, a design in three D printing um, office in El Segundo that does strictly that metal printing of high end aluminum uh, and internal parts for aerospace, and some really cool stuff that that, that is there. Um, so another thing that that is. No new, but that was a, a, an ultimate pain to, to work with before that became completely doable at this point, is list structures. So this is not new. This is, uh, if you see in the, in, in, this is Vickers, so this is in, the, in England, uh, this is in the 30s. They all had this idea that, you know, geodetic or geodesic structures are lighter, better, stronger. The only thing they weren't were easier and cheaper. And it was a, a painful assembly process. You see all the rivets. If uh, on the picture on the, the top, top left, you see all the rivets that were supposed to be that needed to be put there. Uh, you see assembly line. I mean, this is this was not practical. Uh, you probably were not able to put out too many planes, and you know this this was abandoned uh, simply because of the assembly. And, and time that it would take to put together something. It was recognized that the structure was better than, than anything else. Now, nowadays, you can 3D print this. Okay, so let's move on to 
Tosca. So Tosca, we talked about topology optimization. This is a perfect tool for additive manufacturing. The topology optimization's output is exactly what additive manufacturing is looking for. So what happens though, and, and, and one of the reasons is that is because what comes out of Tosca or, or any topology optimization usually cannot be manufactured by standard CNC machine or, 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 or you know any traditional type of techniques. But the advantage of that is, no, instead of being told oh, you can't do that because the machine is not going to be able to cut it this this way, or you want you know three fillets, so you want this and that, and we can't make that. Well, all of a sudden you're the one deciding. I want this part to be able to do this, 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 and that. What it looks like. We're going to print so it doesn't matter what it looks like at the end as long as it's functional. And so we go to the functional requirements as opposed to the, the machine shop is telling me how I can design. And these two additive manufacturing, this is really what, what we, we do at this point. Uh, I don't know how this part would be machined um, without additive manufacturing, for instance. Now, the other thing we talked about. Lattice structures. Well, lattice structures. Uh, one one aspect of it is you fill your your volume with, with lattices. Now, through a topology optimization or, or lattice optimization with Tosca, is we can look at each individual lattice, and we can make it. You know, we can look at the optimization and with distribution of cross sections, for instance. And if you see the animation on the left, what does a grid of equivalent sections mean after optimization to structure? And it is about 40%. It's exactly the same stiffness. Now we can also run to if you look to the to the right, we can also look at this differently and say, oh, give me the same. Give me the mass, approximately the same mass, or make sure to reinforce what I need to. And for instance, uh, the one on the right has all more change in mass and four times the stiffness where it needs to. So this is, you know, a lot of things. And again, this is 3D printable, utterly no problem. Now, as I mentioned before, we have some unknowns, or we have some some constraints with the uh, additive manufacturing that usually exist with the CNC or that are well understood with CNC, for instance. Uh, this is a, a gap between as designed and as manufactured. And this comes from, well, it's a 3D printed part. So there is a thermal process going on. So we're going to have re residual stresses. We're going to have permanent deformation. And on top of it, the materials, well, they kind of have viable properties uh, based on where we start from, based on you know what's the temperature of the uh, the process that we started from. Uh, we design it just like a CAD CAD model, normal CAD uh, model. This is stress-free design. Uh, not that the design is stressful, but um, it's it's designed you know in optimal manner, and and you know we don't take into account uh, the deformation. No addition. And the material, we say it's aluminum, we, we take that as for granted. Well, we, can, uh, we, we, we need to look at that in a different manner because it might not be ent entirely repeatable, you know, uh, this additive manufacturing process. Or if it's repeatable, it might not give us what we want. So we need to be able to predict what we're going to get. And this is where the simulia uh, at manufacturing toolkit comes to play. Uh, in different, um, in, in different aspects, in fact, uh, we we are simulating the additive manufacturing process as whole. So we start with seeing the part. So if you do bottom left, uh, you know, creating a mesh slice by slice. Uh, we we do have tools inside Abacus to to look at layer by layer our uh, residual stresses or, or thermal analysis. So print temperatures, for instance, taking into account sidewall convection, convection, you name it. Uh, 
same thing, the, the thermal stresses created by, you know, manufacturing process and the, the way we, we actually build our part is, is uh, calculated. And also we can look at you know, the distribution, the printing, actual printing uh, aspect of it. Look at the G-code, for instance, at the top left, and uh, building the layers inside Abacus to present that. And as we're building that, we're calculating the temperature, we're calculating the stresses, the deformation, uh, all of that. So a very, very advanced. So we know exactly, given a part, the machine conditions, we know exactly what the part is going to look like, including spring back, potential spring back, and or permanent deformations that we're going to have uh, from more additive manufacturing process. Um, so um, we're going to be um, discussing a quick summary, and then we're going to look at, um, at a sneak preview of what's coming for Katia and, and uh, in the uh, in additive manufacturing. So as far as what we talked about today is topology optimization is not limited to additive manufacturing. Okay, topology optimization gives us a good insight and good guidance even if we use uh, stood CNC or other uh, traditional methods. So, do not shy away from topology optimization just because you don't want to use additive manufacturing. There's still a great deal of, uh, of information we can get out of it. It expands the, the scope of the design. So, if you want to move into additive manufacturing, and the, the potential of the tool is much, much higher. Uh, all of a sudden, we, we can create more interesting or more functional shapes and make them on top of it. So this, this, is, this is completely doable with uh, topology optimization and additive manufacturing. But the design constraints specific to the additive manufacturing process have to be understood and have to be analyzed. And this is where we come to play with Simulia, where we have an advanced tool set that you look at this. And uh, this is you know, what I wanted to, to talk about today. And we'll, we'll open it to questions. The I don't see any questions. Let's see. Uh, let me take a look. Anybody? No. Good. Now, let's look real quick a, a couple minutes on what's coming for uh, Katia. So, the 3D experience, and it's called. Oops. It is called Katia Functional Generative Design. So basically, it is a combination of everything we talked about to create, optimize, recreate from within uh, Katia, including lattice. Uh, so to end up with 3D or additive manufacturing processes. So this is going to be a, a little movie. So we start with uh, this is or aerospace rocket engine mount. Okay, so we have this gray and, and pink part that is a, a, a mount, okay? So now we switch to the 3D Expanse in the Generative Design Explorer, and all then we are looking at our optimization. So we're going to perform a topology optimization, and we're looking at codes that, that this part is going to, to, to enter. Uh, you know, it's fixed to bolts, and we have a, a Want to reduce the mass to and maximize the stiffness. That's all time goal. So we're looking at different increments on, on Tosca for optimization, and we we end up with this. So this is what Tosca told us was the best part. So now we need to actually simulate what the part is going to uh, to, to to see, and we're okay with it. So now. Let's we'll make a actual CAD model, okay? Mesh directly out of a STL file or, or topology optimization result. Now we're going to have 
to create an actual tool that has nice shapes, smooth, and, and again, topology optimization guidance was, uh, it was a, a great tool to get that. Uh, it highlighted for us where we needed uh, more meat and less meat and what shape we could get away with. And, now we're creating the services, so you see quickly patching the services together with Katia, and all of a sudden we end up with a great. We also able to end up with design. So, original. Oh, let, me, uh, let me bring it back. I wanted to suppose that here. If you look at the original, the legacy was, you know, 1.5 pounds. Uh, then we go to less than a pound with milling, okay, just using traditional, using op optimization process to come up with a design that could still be manufactured, okay, milling, so we're on eight. Now, all of a sudden, if we say, well, let's do additive manufacturing, then all of a sudden you can add all those pockets, you can, you can uh, fix some of the box. And all of a sudden we are, you know, with six, almost a half a pound. Now, one of the things that, that is uh, a trick here is also the bite to fly ratio. So how much of scrap do we have, scrap metal? Okay, 15 to one with the traditional process, 10 to one by milling, and 1.1, to so very little, if you want, by additive manufacturing, which is also a big, um, a, a big uh, time and cost saving. So if you guys have any questions or uh, if you just want to follow us and or engage with us, we are all over the place on on the net and you know in, in real life too. Uh so you can find us online. This is a website. Uh Twitter account, we post a lot of things on Twitter. Uh you can look at YouTube uh, for certain videos on Simulia and and continue and, uh, we put them interesting stuff all the time. And LinkedIn again, the company and for there. Um, and 